Welcome back to Lee's Lately. Before we get into this one, if you could just hit that down below, that would really help me out because we're trying to get to 10K by the end of the season. I know it's a big ask, but potentially we could do it. Anyway, as you can see down below me, Leeds United have just won 2-1 at Elland Road against Plymouth Argyle. A game we were expected to win, but nevertheless, nevertheless, easy for me to say, we did so. And I was impressed with the performances of a fair few players, but we will get into that. Um, first of all, though, another win in the game you're expected to win. It is nice. It really is nice to be able to do that. It was a bit tetchy towards the end, but overall, I think the, the scoreline wasn't really a fair reflection of the game. I think it could have been four or five, really, to, to Leeds. The amount of chances that we created, obviously we didn't put a lot of them in the back of the net when we probably should have done, um, but we come away with the three points and that's the most important thing going into this international break. Leicester lost as well, 1-0 um, to Middlesbrough at Middlesbrough, so that is a big result for the rest of the championship, hoping that middle, uh, Leicester's sort of downfall um, begins now or begins when we sort of... Um, Give him a bit of a I taught him a bit of a lesson last week, um, but let's talk about the actual game then. So Leeds didn't particularly start fast and didn't particularly start slow, and neither did Plymouth. It was kind of a scrappy opening exchange really in this game, and I didn't think that either team played particularly well. Um, but Leeds did enough to get on the score sheet early on, and they did so through Dan James in I think it was the twentieth minute or something like that. The ball just dropped at his feet on the edge of the box. Leeds were obviously attacking and then Plymouth cleared the ball or tried to clear the ball, but they just banged it straight at Dan James's feet and he was on the edge of the box. He said, thank you very much and curled it round the defender, round the goalkeeper into the back of the net. Really, really good, calm finish from Dan James and you love to see that sort of thing from him because it shows the progression and the and the level of learning that he's been sort of undergoing as a, as a Leeds player and the way that he's he's sort of settled down a little bit now into this Leeds team and this will give him great confidence this season for the future. So good for him to get another goal as well. Really, really good. Second goal came through Joel Pirro, which was nice again for him to get on the score sheet because he hasn't scored in a few games. So it's nice to get his confidence back up again. Somerville was running towards the box on the left-hand side. Um, Pirro overlapped him and he just dropped the ball into Pirro. Pirro just slotted it under the goalkeeper for 2-0. Leeds really could have had more than that. There was plenty of chances. Not all of them spring to mind right now, but Leeds did have plenty of chances to make it more than that. Even in the first half, it probably should have been 3-0 before half time. I would have said. That would have completely killed the game. But at half time, I did say 2-0 is a dangerous scoreline. It's a very old cliche in football, but it is a very true one because as soon as they score, they start to believe that they can draw and then maybe even go on to win the game. Um, but we did well in the end to control it. Um, I thought a couple of their players that Edwards was very dirty and I wasn't happy with some of the challenges that he was putting in on our players. Sam Byram, of course, had to actually go off injured. So hopefully that's nothing too serious. But when Firpo did come on, I thought he did a good job. Um, he didn't really make any mistakes and he got forward well. He defended well. I was actually pretty happy with what Firpo did. Um, but that brings us on to, to the players, actually. Let's do what we usually do and talk about the players. I think Melier, again, calm performance in goal. Don't think he really made a single mistake. And, and when um, he was at, called upon and when he was asked, he was able to make saves pretty easily and was able to pick up the ball um, in most of those situations and, and catch them and, and just dive on the ball and flop at it. And so there wasn't anything that really troubled him too much, apart from obviously the goal, which I don't think he could have done anything about, really. Um yeah, obviously, sorry, before we go on to the players, I'm all over the place, but um, before we go on to the players, actually, um, they did score late on, of course, um, a ball into the box, and it was a little bit of Leeds going to sleep, and the ball went over Cooper's head, then went to the corner, they whipped it in and just tapped it in in front of goal, and it was a bit of a um, squeaky bum time for the, last, uh, for the last 10 minutes, should we say, as we were trying to hold on to that game, but really, we never should have been in that position because we'd, we'd, out, we'd outplayed them, really. Anyway... Then we go on to right back, Archie Gray. Again, really good, really good. It's a couple of times he got skinned early on, but he soon, le he soon learned uh, how his opposition um, number was playing and, and how he should play against them and, and did really well to, to sh shut them out. And then he actually did forward to, did forward, did well to get forward, kept hold of the ball where he should have kept hold of the ball, passed it where he should have passed it and did everything right, really. Really good performance from somebody so young. Then we come on to Joe Roden for me. 
man of the match. Uh, he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, he was covering everything. And I, I said this on Joe's podcast. Uh, if you haven't seen Joe's podcast, by the way, it's on nearly every week. Um, and it's a, it's always a good chat uh, on there. But I said on it the other night that I felt like Cooper and Rodon isn't the worst combination because Rodon's got that bit of pace to come back and cover for Cooper. And I think that happened a few times and he was sort of sweeping and doing well there. And he, you could see at the times when the defence wasn't playing that well that Rodon was screaming at them, really trying to command them and tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, so I liked that from him and I thought all round he had an excellent game. He was there every single time to head the ball away, every single time to clear the ball away. I thought he did really, really well. Byram, up until the point where Furpo came on, we've already talked about Furpo, but Byram, I think, also played really well. Um, didn't really put a, a toe out of line, to be honest. Um, Ampadu and Kamara, I think at this time Ampadu was was better and won that sort of uh, midfield battle uh, between the two of them. I think Ampadu was better. Glenn Kamara was good, picked up the ball in good areas, distributed it well, kept things going, made tackles when he needed to. I think he played well, but I think Ampadu was just that level above today. And I think that ball through to Piro um, and the ball through to Jorginho again as well over the top, they were fantastic. And that's exactly what you love to see from Ampadu. But yeah, tackling, winning the ball, interceptions, tackles, excellent from Ampadu then you've got Dan James and Somerville both really really good performances Somerville the one who was dragging Leeds up the pitch and getting the ball into the the forward areas more and Dan James being the one to finish that one earlier on and Dan James very good at stretching the play as well going out wide dragging Leeds up the pitch giving an option and then coming inside and, and playing the ball across the box and cutting back on himself winning free kicks doing really well out there then you've got Jorginho and Piro and I thought Jorginho again really really good he's finishing left a lot to be desired but he got himself into more positions where he could have scored today than he usually would so that's a positive sign and also I thought that the way he actually played and the way he controlled the tempo in the, in the attack was really good he was central to nearly everything we were doing so really happy with Jorginho's performance as well and then you've got Joel Piro who obviously got his goal so that's that's big for him um and that's kind of what you want, really. He didn't have a massive contribution other than that, but I thought he was more involved than some of the games he's been in. Um, he, he did get involved a little bit and and linked up with those attacking players at, at times. And the more I think about it, actually, I think he was quite involved in a lot of the attacking that we were doing. So I think he did play well today and obviously got his goal as well. So fantastic result from Leeds. Really, really good performance at the end we sort of left a little bit to be desired in terms of hanging on to a game and I do think that 2-0 I think Farkin needs to find a balance where obviously when we were 4-0 up against Huddersfield you can understand sitting off for the second half and just saying do you know what we've already won this game because you're protecting people aren't you but I think if it's 2-0 at half time and I don't particularly think that we tried to do that from half time close things out but I think if you are 2-0 up you kind of need to be wary that someone could easily quite easily come back into this game um so for me i think we just need to be a little bit more wary that maybe we need to try and go and get that third goal rather than sitting off um so for me yeah that's something that we can learn from in future i think but we won the game and that's the most important thing and uh it gets us three points closer to that holy land of the premier league which we all know and hate so that's what that's what it's all for to go up to there and then be miserable again. But um, as it stands now, it is nice just to watch Leeds United play good football, win football matches and have exciting young players on the pitch. So yeah, I'm very happy with that result. Thanks everybody for, for watching this one and for all of those of you who joined me during the live stream. Um, thanks for all joining me as well. That was great. And uh, like I said, there'll be an episode of... Did I say that in this video? I feel like that was maybe on my live stream. There'll be an episode of Dream Teams out on Wednesday night. Um, so make sure you check that one out as well. Lockie's was just this midweek and then Jers was the week before that. You can go and check those out. They're evergreen content. You don't need to... Um, they're not time sensitive, basically. Um, they're talking about their favorite Leeds players of all time. Um, so they're a good watch and, and something to watch in the international break as well. So there'll be one coming out on Wednesday and then obviously you can catch up with the old ones in the international break as well if you've got nothing else Leeds-wise to watch. But thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time on Leeds Lately. <laughs>